Welcome to the Center for Homeland Defense and Security Master's Thesis Series. With me today is Kimberly Hayward, Regional Community Preparedness Officer with FEMA. Welcome, Kimberly. Thanks for having me. So tell us what your topic was for your research. So my thesis focused on engaging children and youth to build a culture of disaster preparedness, especially as it relates to K through 12 school curriculum. And uh, what drove you to that topic? How did you come up with it? So in my everyday job, I focus a lot on public education and outreach and thinking about how we can get um, more people to prepare for disasters across our country because research studies consistently show that uh, around 50% of the country is not prepared for a disaster. Um, but at the same time, reaching children and youth um, is a really viable way to get more people to prepare because FEMA's research shows that when kids bring home uh, information from school about disaster preparedness, then their parents are more likely to prepare. Um, so you have that double benefit of reaching the kids, but also reaching the parents. So it's an area that has a lot of promise and opportunity, um, especially because FEMA has made it a, a key priority to build a culture of disaster preparedness um, in their strategic plan. So I wanted to look at that as a way to collect a body of evidence around youth preparedness in particular, and see if that is a way that we could help build a culture of preparedness around the country. And what methodology did you use? So I looked at, I, f I first started um, by looking at social marketing campaigns in past policy areas that have been successful. So if you would think about things like anti-smoking campaigns, um, the Truth Initiative was a really big marketing campaign uh, that was very successful um, in the 90s and that you know, resulted in uh, significantly less numbers of people, um, especially young people, uh, smoking cigarettes. Um, similarly, seatbelt enforcement campaigns such as Click It or Ticket were very successful as well um, through their you know, high visibility, high enforcement um, campaigns that have been done across the country. So I wanted to see how we can take lessons from those successful public policy campaigns and you know, perhaps apply that to disaster preparedness. And then I also looked at international case studies of K through 12 curriculum for disaster preparedness to see where we could get some lessons learned and best practices and maybe apply that to US policy as well. Uh, so that's really the methodology I used. And then my resulting findings um, took a look at, okay, here are what would be some key elements of an ideal curriculum for disaster preparedness. And for our purposes, what, what are some of those key findings? So first and foremost, I found that from the social marketing campaigns that um, they all successfully shifted values across generations. So in order to have a cultural change in an area, then you need to impact you know, values and social norms around that topic. Um, when children grow up, um, when they go through school and things like that, they are forming their values on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, I found that you know, when we're able to get information into the schools, we have a higher chance of impacting values. So if we could do something with that disaster preparedness like that, then that would be a very you know, good way to impact values across a generation. And what are the, what are the key ages that we're talking about here? We're talking about um, kids you know, as young as um, kindergarten and going to um, the 12th grade level. So um, I looked at um, examples of curriculum across those levels in France and New Zealand. And I took some lessons back from them. And I also looked at um, the academic literature around effective curriculum. And I found that you know, the curriculum recommendations really fall under four categories, um, curriculum scope, engaged learning, school, parental, and community involvement, and effective evaluation. And from all that, what surprised you the most about what you learned or what you were researching? What surprised me the most is the importance of engaging um, parents, school, and the broader community in disaster preparedness. Just having a school curriculum for disaster preparedness um, might not be enough to really impact change on a broad scale. It really needs to be integrated into school safety plans, um, like emergency operations planning and drills. Um, also, it's really important to involve parents, obviously, um, as members you know, of the households and things like that. Um, and also bringing the larger community in. So teaching kids about civic engagement and ways that they can really advocate for change in their communities around issues that matter like climate change or you know, flooding, um, earthquake preparedness and things like that. And so how can somebody like you who does this every day at FEMA engage with those K through 12 curriculums? What might that look like? The education system in the US is obviously very localized. So there 
are some some key ways that you know some strategies that I found in my in my thesis findings that would be you know viable options for us to attempt to um, get curriculum into the schools. One of those is a mandatory public health education requirements. 80% of school districts currently have some public health education requirements. So if we could somehow rope uh, emergency preparedness into that, that could be a way to get the curriculum into schools. Um, we could also look at um, active shooter um, scenarios, which are unfortunately happening more and more frequently. Um, because of that, schools have taken a big interest in emergency operations planning and things like that. Um, if we could also encourage them to have a student preparedness element added to it, I think that would be a good way to um, yeah, include that as well. Um, and then third, if we tied disaster preparedness to mandatory curriculum requirements that already exist, that would be another way that we could streamline um, the, um, you, the streamlined disaster preparedness in the schools. So for example, there's the next generation science standards, which have already been adopted by almost half of the states in the country. And so if we had um, key elements of our curriculum aligned to those elements of the next generation science standards, then we would be kind of killing two birds with one stone with that as well. What would your ideal uh, audience be for this thesis? Who my ideal want to read it. Yeah, so my ideal audience would be FEMA senior leadership um, to so that they you know will see the importance of reaching children and youth in schools and you know potentially fund um, the development of new curriculum. Also, um, educators and administrators, uh, state emergency management agencies, um, and local emergency managers, they all play a key role in getting curriculum into the schools because um, it's important um, in our the way that our system is set up to, you know, we're we're only going to have a voluntary curriculum. So the more that we make people aware of it, then the more likely it is to be implemented. So therefore, the more people that see the research about how you know engaging children and youth is really important for disaster preparedness, um, the better. So I really would like it to be uh, diverse and. Um, the audience that I reach out to. Well, our audience is primarily Homeland Security Public Safety. What can they do in their communities to help further your goal? So in, in communities, it'd be really beneficial for those Homeland Security leaders to talk to um, the educators that are in their community, school districts, um, school safety officials, especially um, if they're already talking to them about things like active shooter preparedness and things like that. Um, just adding that student preparedness component, making schools aware that there are existing curriculums already out there that they could implement um, would be really beneficial. Um, FEMA has a something called a youth preparedness catalog that lists every available curriculum and youth preparedness program in the country. Um, so just offering that to schools and saying that here we do have curriculum available. Um, we have something called uh, the Student Tools for Emergency Planning Program at FEMA. It's a great example. Um, it's geared towards fourth and fifth grade students. It only requires one hour of classroom instruction, uh, which is you know very straightforward and doesn't require a lot of classroom time. Um, that's kind of an easier sell with school districts than you know saying, okay, here's you know an 80 hour curriculum that you need to implement. Um, just making them aware that these types of resources exist for no charge right. um, would be really beneficial. Excellent. Well, you've conducted a, a great service for our communities and uh, thank you for your research. Well thank done. you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs>